We got a red dot, folks. Welcome back to Akron's hottest and fastest growing show. Three fair to go. I'm your host, Hank Forrester, coming to you live from 22 School, Akron, right over here in Fairlawn, Ohio. And I am here with Katie and Grant. Hi. So we're going to meet them right now. We're going to show this place off for you. I'm going to come behind the camera and I'm going to let them come out and find their little desk here. And we're going to ask them some questions. First of all, guys, hi, how are you? Say hi to the 330. Doing great. Hi, 330. 330. All right. So the first question I always ask is, tell us your 330 story. What's your guys' story? Um, I'll start out. Uh, I'm from the 330 originally, so grew up in West Akron. Uh, kind of had a long, long story with dance that we'll get into later, but finished <clears throat> out my dance career in New York City. Uh, welcomed a son in 2017 and decided to move back to Akron because it's a great family place. Uh, my parents live here and uh, we wanted to start a business and share our love for dance with the littles and thought this would be a great place to do it. Okay, Grant. My 330 story is a little shorter. I fell in love with this lady and I fell in love with 330. <laughs> so where, where did you grow up though? Uh, I'm from uh, Spokane, Washington originally. Wow, okay, so you, well, you're way over here. Okay, yeah. well that's cool. All right, so, um, so tell us about, tell us about uh, you know, your, your, you said your love of dance. Give us your, your history with dance. When did, when did you notice in life that you were initially interested in it? So very little. I was uh, like, you know, many of our families coming in here for class. You know, my, my little one loves to dance around the house. That was me from when I was tiny. Love music, love, you know, everything sparkly and, and pretty. Uh, started dance when I was about five and immediately wanted to go to ballet class every day. And my family outside of my mom were questioning why she was taking me to dance every day. Like, isn't this a little bit much? And she said, it's not me. She wants to go every day. <laughs> so um, at five, I pretty much knew I wanted to be a professional ballerina. I don't think anybody quite believed me, but uh, so it goes. And just went on from there. I uh, kind of increased my studies, got more and more serious. Um, Ended up uh, doing um, a lot of my serious training here in town at Nan Klinger's Excellence in Dance Studio. And then during my high school years, I moved to Washington, D.C. to train full-time with the Washington School of Ballet, uh, which is where I then um, got my first professional job and met this guy. Okay. <laughs> and Grant? Yeah, well, so my, my love for dance actually uh, uh, did, didn't happen immediately. I... Uh, was kind of your typical boy. I wanted to be involved in sports and uh, actually was uh, in competitive ice skating and my coach uh, recommended that I take uh, some ballet classes to help strengthen and improve my line and things. And uh, actually it was uh, my, my ballet teachers who uh, made it very uh, enjoyable. And uh, from there, I just kind of wanted to keep coming back and had fun and, um, uh, the, the love for dance just grew from there, and uh, I went on to some really great prestigious ballet schools, uh, Pacific Northwest Ballet in Seattle, and then from there I went to uh, the School of American Ballet in New York, uh, and then uh, got my first job, and uh, like I said, I met this, this lovely lady here. Okay, and so you two actually met basically at work. Or, okay. So, you got it. Yeah. So, so, so tell us about that life. And, and that's something that we really haven't gotten much into over the years in terms of our other coverage of other dancers. Which, by the way, I'm a dance dad, full disclosure, and I had to get, I had to get permission to be here, right? Because you guys do stuff that's different than, than what our other studio does where my, where my daughter goes to. All right. So, cause she started grilling me. She's like, you're going to do what now? And so, so I'm allowed to be here today. Okay. All right. So tell us, tell us about what was that like, that life on the road and, and, and the, the grind of that dance career. Great question. Um, a lot of people are totally in the dark about what a life as a real uh, performer is like. Uh, we were fortunate to hold positions together for almost 20 years in dance companies on contract, which is, is pretty unusual. Uh, I think we lived in like six, seven, eight cities together and you know, would do a season in that city. We did a little bit of touring, but not a ton. Uh, but we really, you know, had some great homes in these different places and great dance community and uh, that's something that we're so happy to have again here with ballet school. Uh, but the day-to-day, -day, um, 
is it's really an all-in kind of thing. So it's like 60 hours a week between your ballet class every morning, six hours of rehearsal, cross training, physical therapy, you name it, you know, anything, your body's a machine. Um, and, and, but then it, you know, it obviously the payoff is, is going on stage, uh, which is, you know, an experience that is absolutely amazing. Um, uh, I think just to <laughs> dovetail, I mean, um, most people, as Katie said, uh, uh, you know, we, we were lucky to uh, to be with each other. Most people are on their own. They don't have maybe necessarily the support system that they have. So uh, e even though I think maybe most people would like to feel like they're putting their work behind them, it was nice that we would be able to kind of be able to co commiserate about all the things that happen. Oh, what, you know, this this happened today and that happened. And why didn't Judy get out of my way? Or you know, <laughs> but, uh, no, Seriously, though, it, it's been... Um, you know, a blessing really to, to have uh, have uh, have this lady next to me, and you know we, we were able to support each other. So yeah, very cool, we're very really cool. Here. All right, so let's talk about the studio. All right, All right. so right now I'm gonna kind of we're gonna pan around. I'm gonna have you guys go and walk over there and just kind of well just let's just give us a little tour, and then we'll get into what when you open, how you open, and all that good stuff. So here we have the actual dance space where the magic happens. Uh, as you can see, it's a uh, small scale ballet studio. So it's sized specifically for our little people, 18 months to eight years old. They're not overwhelmed by the space. And it's open to the waiting area so the grown-ups can see their, um, their little ones doing their best ballet. We have uh, spot markers on the floor to kind of encourage um, keeping our distance right now, which is helpful. Uh, we have a lot of fun uh, props back here. We have lots of creative things we do with scarves, flowers, wands, you name it. Lots of sparkly things, bubbles for the, the baby dancers. And uh, these beautiful tutus on the wall that, that are a great example of, of uh, you know, the culmination of your dance training. Be aware of those. I'm going to show the lobby area right here. So this is where parents can chill and just hang out, mm -hmm. right? So what, um, typically right now, uh, what are your class sizes? So we've been limiting to uh, six in a class, but are just now adding a few spots. So um, it's a great time for people to come and check us out. Some of our busiest times have been on a wait list, so we're opening up a few more spots. Uh, we'll never have more than 10 kids in a class, so it's always going to be a very good ratio of kids to teacher. Um, right now, it'll be we'll, we're opening some of the classes up to eight students, so still plenty of space, plenty of space for everybody. Uh, to keep their distance and feel comfortable. Um, and with our toddler classes, it's uh, caregiver participation. So we just will have about six students and six parents in those classes. So now you guys just do ballet, is that correct? Just ballet. All right. And you start, I heard, I heard, the, I heard the word 18 months, okay? <laughs> so you go from 18 months to 8 years old, is that correct? That's right. So you guys just focus on the littles. Yes. How do you teach? An 18-month-year-old to do first position. How does, how does that even work? That's an excellent question, Hank. So, you know, we consider it a win if we hit uh, a first position in class with our toddlers, which oftentimes we do, at least half of them on any given day. Uh, so we get really creative. With the little ones, it's really exposure to the class environment, the music, all that fun stuff. Uh, we do we do it with a lot of games and a lot of our props. So we hide our feet. We say hello to our feet. That's how we learn about pointing our feet. We make shapes. You know, like let's see if we can make a diamond with our legs and um, you know hide something behind there. Um, but you know, a lot of times it's uh, it's it's just a lot of fun with the little ones. It's really age appropriate. We're not trying to get them to do anything that <laughs> they're not actually ever going to do. All right. So 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 how did this happen? All right. So you're like, hey. Let's start a business. So, so walk us through that process and, and, and then your timing of it too. Tell us, tell us how that, how did this happen? Yeah, we always have excellent timing. We, <laughs> we, we moved to New York right during Hurricane Sandy. So, you know, that was awesome timing too. Uh, well, obviously every dancer is faced with this transition. You get to a certain age and performing is just not going to be a thing anymore. Um, we actually, you know, owning a dance school was, is obviously a go-to for a lot of ex-dancers and it wasn't necessarily first on our list um, for a variety of reasons, but uh, we found ourselves really missing dance. We were doing some other things, fitness and, and managing a dance company and 
it just really wasn't, um, you know, that, that passion that we had been so lucky to have. So we were really anxious to get back to it. Um, and then having our son kind of changed everything. <laughs> we sort of got into that, you know, that, that parental mindset and appreciating all of those little developments that kids go through and how, how dance can, can benefit them so much. And so all of a sudden we felt like, wow, we really want to, we really want to share this with other families and do it in a way that's a little bit different, maybe a little bit more convenient, a little more seamless. Uh, it's by the month. You're not kind of, it's not a stressful thing to bring your kid to Juju school. Um, you know, they've signed up for these classes and now they don't want to do it this month. You know, that kind of thing. Um, anything? Oh, well, you want to talk about how, 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 how did, the franchise? Right, yeah. right. So, uh, uh, the dance world is very small and a friend of ours introduced us to Tutu School, which is a very small franchise. It's owned by an ex-professional and most of the locations are also. Uh, she's created this lovely system where she gives you the resources, right? Like the website and marketing materials that dancers don't necessarily have a lot of experience in, but then she, she kind of, you know, lays the curriculum too, but gives you a lot of freedom to run your own business within that, um, however it fits in your community. So um, we found the Tutu School uh, just really rang true with everything uh, as a family that we would want for our children. And so we just thought, you know, this is too perfect. Let's, let's run with this. And then Grant can speak to the timing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we signed a lease and then uh, the shutdown happened, so, uh, which was a kind of a blessing in disguise because uh, it gives you a chance to work, gives us a chance to work and, and actually kind of design things around uh, the parameters of uh, the conditions of, you know, being socially distant, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, kind of creating an environment that's uh, safe for everybody, for families. So, okay. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, our landlord was, you know, he, was, he worked with us and he, uh, uh, you know, did a lot for us in, in some ways. And uh, um, really, it, it, it kind of worked itself out. And uh, the, the timing of our opening, we opened in October of 2020. And um, I think uh, as it was then, as it is now, um, you know, families are starved for uh, activities for their children to do. And um, like I said, it was kind of a, a blessing in disguise because it really created a way for us to kind of create a nurturing environment, a safe environment for families and children to be in. So, Okay. I'm going to flip around real quick over here. I'm going to show the board. So we got, these are, you got, you got, uh, opportunities for things that they can purchase. Okay. And then you've also got, um, so give us an idea of, uh, just a general cost structure of, of if you, if someone wants to enroll. Yeah. Great question. So we are by monthly membership. It's $75 flat membership. There's no registration fees. There's no, you know, waiting in line. There's no bells and whistles. There's no commitment other than one month at a time with that membership you get uh, a weekly spot reserved in class, but you also receive access to Tutu TV On Demand, so you can log in for classes at home, and we offer unlimited makeups while you're registered, so if you miss a class one week, two weeks, three weeks, it doesn't matter, you can make it up at any other class time, which is really handy, especially with the little ones. Uh, what else? I guess, uh, you know, we're, we're always uh, running specials on classes that are new on the schedule uh, or, you know, ones that we've had kids move up out of and don't have as many people. So, you know, usually you'll find some kind of a, a, a way to get a nice discount on your first month here at Tutu School. Um, we're also providing camps for the summertime, too. We have a, a Cinderella camp in July and a Swan Lake camp in August. Um, which will be like a half day offering. We got two comments coming. Uh, Tara Rusher. Yeah. Okay. She said we love Tutu School. It's a great place. Hey, Tara. And then uh, <laughs> Nick Man Mancuso, who works with me, he's part of our. Uh, he's our does it suck review guy, and he's on Rubber City Reviews. He said that his sister used to work here. Man oh, Mancuso. I'm not sure. Man <laughs> okay. You should have a different last name. I, d I maybe that's the thing. I don't know. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, um, but yeah. So, where can we find you? You're on Facebook. You're on Instagram. Is there like a website too? Yeah. All right. 
Yep. You can go to tutuschoolofakron.com or you can just search up tutuschool.com and you can search for Fairlawn, best Fairlawn location. Um, but, uh, or, or we have a phone number too if you want to give us a call. Yeah, or <laughs> yeah, any of those options um, at Tutu School Akron on social media is a good way to go. You can message us on there. And, um, and since you mentioned it, um, I'd love to offer anybody who contacts us and mentions 330 to go a half off your first month. Hey, there's a deal. Half off your first month if you mentioned this show, 330 to go. He said Olivia Hanna. Oh, yeah. Olivia. All right. Okay. Yeah, we miss Olivia. All right. <laughs> and, and again, the pandemic messed all that stuff up in yeah. terms of people working places, right? Absolutely. Um, so, guys, thanks for letting me uh, come out and, and share your story with you. And, and you're now accepting new, 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 new faces, right? So, um, you know, I, I tagged the video with your studio name in there. So it should be, uh, it should help to direct people to your Facebook page. Um, but on top of that, if you want to get into the comments later Absolutely. and just throw all your information down in there. Will do. And, and um, so yeah, thank you so much. And we wish you guys the best of luck and, and working with the littles. God bless you. <laughs> and, and then, and then when you're done and they're, and they're eight and they graduate, just send them on down the road and, and, and Absolutely. I'm sure my daughter will be happy to work with them. Absolutely. All right. All right, that sounds great. But thank you so much for being here and for me for allowing me to be here. Um, and tomorrow I'm gonna be bringing a special coverage from up in Cleveland, and I'll keep that a secret until I go live up there. And then on Saturday, Saturday is a, a complete car day for me. I, I I really am terrible at covering anything to do with cars. <laughs> So we're going to be hopefully being out at Barber and Speedway for their opening day and getting a chance to get some coverage out there. All right. Until then, I don't know where I'm going, but there ain't no sense of being late. Everybody out there, and you guys too, say goodnight, Shirley. <laughs> goodnight, Shirley. Good night, Shirley. Good night, Shirley.